Welcome everybody here to our uh, January meeting. And uh, I want to uh, first off uh, welcome our new uh, board member who is our WLS, Western Library System representative, Francis Okilo. So this is his first meeting. So welcome, Francis. Thank you. Glad to have you. Um, and uh, I think with that, we uh, will begin the, uh, begin the meeting. So, uh, first item of business is the approval of the minutes. I was not here last time, so I don't have an opinion on the minutes. Yeah, we did the minutes. Oh, sorry. Please. Just to say how happy I am to be uh, in this distinguished company to work uh, for the library. Uh, it is certainly a great honor for me, but more than that, it's a responsibility. The honor will come once the, <laughs> after the responsibility has been discharged. Well, uh, I'd like to pay tribute to my predecessor, Dr. Well, who I think has done a splendid job as he has represented you. Uh, I have one small complaint that is uh, that she left me a big shoe. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking so afraid that I can pay that shoe. Uh, I look forward to working very closely with the board and with the trustees. And my aim is simple, to make the libraries accessible and usable to the public. That's the same way everything else I do is subservient to that. So I look forward to working very closely and working with you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you want to? Um, I think we have an amendment to the minutes. Well, it says Chuck Burke, our president, called the meeting to order. Oh, that's mistake. <laughs> um, he wasn't here. So we just have to check. It's about oh, four. Oh, okay. and, uh, Galloway is not going to be here this evening. He emailed uh, Deirdre and I had some business come up out of town. Any other amendments to the minutes? Uh, I'll make a motion to uh, approve the minutes as amended by um, Trustee Clark. Can I have a second? Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Minutes. From the December meeting are approved. Uh, financial reports. Um, oh, um, think, oh yeah, yeah. Um, uh, financial reports. Dean, is there anything you want to highlight to the board? Um, and uh, maybe I'll just take a quick minute. Um, be, and, and I will give the report. But the finance committee just met. And we are going to schedule a budget committee meeting coming up. But the financial figures are on the board, so there's no issues. We're in line with the budget. Um, so, no, no particular report today, but there's materials in the folder. Um, do we have any statistics report that we cover that in your remarks? I'll cover that in my remarks. Thanks. Uh, and uh, uh, we have a double WLS report this. Um, this uh, uh, meeting? No, I guess it's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know when you're official enough. To I, didn't want to, I don't want to pass over it inadvertently. No, I can only say I had a couple of meetings with the, uh, with the director, executive director, was needed to complete myself this uh, guest time. I suppose we're going to have our first meeting on the 29th, if I recall. Uh, and then I would have one of the years for the meeting. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to click on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> I just didn't want to pass over in case you had to do that. Um, I just have a briefly, um, very briefly, I just want to uh, remind folks that uh, the Westchester Library System is migrating from its current online system. The system is a Cersei system, the name of the vendor, and uh, the county had made the decision some time ago to choose a new vendor. A vendor is called Evergreen. 
And um, I fully expect to have the same functionality in terms of the online catalog and all the staff modules and um, even better uh, resources since this system is um, sort of a, a system that um, um, libraries or library consortiums can shape to meet their specific needs. So we're supposed to cut over in April, April Fool's Day, which is a little late. We didn't choose that, um, somebody else did. And um, staff is going through the process of getting ready in terms of, get, of, of training. We're also making decisions about um, materials to retain or not, particularly older materials because it costs money to migrate all um, materials to our new system. And if there's um, materials or formats that aren't being used, we're, we're looking at that. But that's my report on um, the director's um, uh, county meeting will be next Thursday. I'll learn more in February. That's it. Share with the board and the public. So it's exciting. 
Um, is the strategy to wait till everything's in and then kind of do it all at once? That kind of right. We we want to know when we will receive on the desk and the furniture, and then we'll reach out to our various vendors to schedule everything, have everything lined up. We really want to do it in as efficient of a fashion as possible with as little disruption to public service as possible. However, we may need to close for a few days if we if we encounter a situation where the circulation desk will be sort of out of condition. Um, we're trying to mitigate that, but um, we, we also are very conscious in the fact that we want the public to be safe as construction goes on, and um, we want our staff to be safe, and we want to be able to provide great customer service. So um, I'll share more with you as soon as we have more um, um, information to, to pass along. Um, our, our, our grant um, opportunities are still gestating as well. You may recall we have a $140,000 a year state library construction grant through the auspices of the Westchester Library System. That is now in Albany. We'll, we fully expect to receive approval in June of this year, and then receive the money in later, uh, later summer. We also have a construction grant for the Uganda Children's Library, much smaller, to replace our aging furnace. That's um, $8,625. And same time period, June to receive approval. Money should arrive later in the summer. Um, we also applied through the good graces of Senator Andrea Stewart Cousins, a um, hundred thousand dollar grant for this circulation gateway project. It's an economic development um, EDAP grant, um, and that has not arrived. I have not heard any word. I reached out to. Our contact with Senator Stewart Cousins' office last Friday. I haven't heard from her. She said she'd get back to me. I emailed her again today. So we're hoping that we'll get that money too. That will mitigate our expenses in relation to this project. And the other um, project that we applied for, uh, that we just uh, really learned about it at the last minute, but it really fits in very well with our vision of the library and its future is money through the $10 million state grant that the city received. Uh, DRI and um, all sorts of great improvements are being considered in terms of th those monies. One of the um, elements that, um, that the grant is looking at is the creation of a co-working space and we think the library is uh, perfectly poised to be a part of that solution and we, we uh, made an application to be considered um, as a player because certainly what libraries do, what we do, um, is provide um, co-working space, but we'd like to expand upon that. And what we're uh, proposing relative to our library is not unusual. There are libraries throughout the country that are doing this on um, one as close as uh, Brooklyn Public Library, Grand Army Plaza um, uh, Main Branch, and there are other libraries throughout the country that are proposing, they're providing co-working space so that everybody has access to computers, has access to Wi-Fi, has access to printers, have the ability to spend time and work on their projects, entrepreneurial and otherwise, um, have the ability to have training um, and classes, et cetera, um, you know, 3D printers. There's so many elements to co-working that has become really relevant to, to um, our, our public communities. And so we're interested in following this grant uh, project and if it happens not to be successful, you know, perhaps we'll be able to um, go forward in a different direction to realize this, um, this dream. Tom, what, what grant was it? DRI. The DRI. That's the Revitalization Initiative. Right. Yeah. We just wanted to, I have the pleasure of working with the Planning Committee for the DRI. So we did um, kind of recuse ourselves when the library grant gets mentioned. Um, but we decided to, it's really exciting, it's exciting, it's sort of weird, you'd be so excited about this project. You know whatever happens. And we do have a working space we do. Right. right. So I'm really happy to hear that it's something we can do because um, I know there are spaces here and I've had people ask me about them and then I have to tell them the prices and it's really nice that maybe in the future I'll be able to say, well, there is right. a more affordable option. Beyond Starbucks. Yeah, yeah. 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 Or some of the private enterprises. We're not looking to, um, we're not looking to, 
take anybody's business um, and push it away. What we're trying to do is, like a public library should, make these resources available yeah. to everybody, no matter what their means are, no matter where they where they are in the community. Tom, I, I, had, an, I had, a, had an idea because I saw it through Facebook, and um, and I, perhaps if we if we go through the the not sure if the library can apply, but perhaps through the foundation, if we propose that project. Uh, it has to be a transformative project, and I think it, it's transformative in that it will help every, from entrepreneurs, adults, young adults, to college students, and, uh, but it impacts 100, right? It's $90,000, and they, they, they give out three years every year. So I don't know, that's something I think we should look into. I'll send you the information, and I think it would be something that would be great. In the event that, you know, I mean, why not? If you, if you secure both, I mean, that, that would enhance a lot of uh, opportunities. And, and you know, it's so funny, once you create a, a vision and you start um, uh, um, uh, constructing it in terms of concretes, and you have access to some grant money, it makes you more viable for other money. And the idea of our many partnerships in the community could be factored into this co-working space. So there are all sorts of ways we can work it and spin it to just make the library, again, a really um, a, um, relevant and a useful space for, for everybody in the community. Impact 100. Impact 100. It's a, uh, it's a, a basic Westchester, and it's a group of um, women. Uh, there's a membership fee, and it's like $1,000 to be on it, and it's a huge committee, and the process is a little, you know, stretched out, and they review proposals, match with proposals. If they select, if the committee selects you, then they do three tours with all the women part of the group to see the project and get a good impact. What the hundred plus? Um, yeah. Hundred plus yes. meetings. No, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's purple. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and a lot of agencies have have that have been formed from college centers all the way over to kitchens. Um, I, I say that. All oh, right. Want, I want to last year. <laughs> <laughs> it's a stretch something, but it's competitive, but it's really cool and it fits transformative. And 90,000. 90,000. Is that specific to just the state of New York or just Westchester? Oh, just Westchester. Women's Collective Gaming Organization Engaging Women in Philanthropy. After 345 members of people awarded close to $1.5 million in the grant. I'd be curious to see more information about the campaign. Um, I just got done. Um, relative to our friends' organization, uh, they have been stymied by our elevator problem, but but yet they are still moving forward and conducting their monthly book sales as well as their three times a week um, book sales as well as their bookstore book sales. And um, as I mentioned at the last meeting, the friends approved the budget that will give the library in 2019. Um, over $60,000 um, when we had our board meeting this past Wednesday. Uh, the friends told me that um, um, over and above our budget request, they gave us nearly $74,000, which is just amazing because all of this, all of these um, monies are not um, gained by uh, big checks, but by people buying um, library bo or books and other non good material. So, you know, kudos to the friends. Uh, relative to what they do every day, it's really quite amazing. Um, and frankly, I think we have the best friends group in the county. I mean, yeah. we do. Um, we do, we do. And other libraries in the county, you know, know that and are, you know, maybe a little envious. Yeah, I think so. It's, it's, a, it's a good feeling. Um, um, in regards to the elevators and the friends accepting uh, donations, they are accepting small donations of books. Um, um, usually two bags, again, because of this elevator situation where their um, huge uh, storage uh, area is in the lower level where there's no elevator access right at this particular point in time. So I just wanted to share that. Um, the next friend's uh, book sale will be just concluded previously, but February 1st and 2nd, and their board meeting will be February 6th. And um, the foundation, again, um, as lucky as we are to have the friends, we're just as lucky to have the foundation and their support, its advocacy and its financial support. And um, their meeting is this, I think it's this Monday. Monday it's this Monday night. And um, we had talked about trying to get us there. Um, but 
So uh, we, we didn't do this. We talked about getting everybody a list of it. Maybe even if we did it once, you know, if we were on the back twice a year. Do you want me to send something out? Can you send the list at their meeting yeah. and the friends meeting, yeah. and then we can send? Yeah. So I think I'll do that. I think I can come back or no one on Monday. Yeah. I'm going to double check the calendar. Chuck was at last. So actually, I think in particular foundation, there's been good board representation the last few years where there's usually at least one board member attending. And uh, that kind of rotational approach, I think, is really useful because the foundation board gets to know the library board. So Francis wants to, you know, go on Monday night if you can. Um, you're welcome. Oh, and is this on Monday? At 745, Francis, um, in the meeting room, right, right behind us. 745, yeah. But if you we'll get that the information. I'll do that tomorrow. And we can also follow the dates, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, I, it's, that's easily done. I'm happy to um, facilitate that. Um, let's see, uh, the foundation also had received a grant uh, through the Mary Smart uh, uh, Family Foundation, which is an, um, a, a foundation that we've been very successful with in years past. And um, they received a grant for $25,000 for the circulation desk. And that money's been already given to us, so uh, through um, a process, we will have access to that $25,000 um, maybe as soon as next week. And so what we're planning to do is to um, ask for that support to allow us to continue to improve the theater in terms of lighting, in terms of the sound system, in terms of the Crestron um, entity and the screen. So, so we, um, we're hoping that the uh, foundation will approve that nice yeah. trip. First try is that guy right there. Yeah. yeah. And we're not you're looking at very we're not official. Awesome, yeah. Davis. Let me get a picture. He's there. He's there. Yeah. And then we just yeah. 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 No, I think he's, I think he's where I think you placed him. So nice to see you. I think, you know, we, is he here? He's, he's there. there. Yeah, yeah. He's still there. He did walk. Okay, that's good. That would be wonderful. He's smiling. So, um, let's see what else. And I'm, I'm reminding everybody that the foundation's 25th gala I'm coming up in May, and um, I hope you will um, attend. And I'm also reminding you that the Rotary Club of New Rochelle. Francis is currently the president, oh, is having oh, its 100th um, anniversary okay. ball. And um, there's a real library connection that there are a number of people who are being honored for service. Um, many of them are part of the library family. Uh, Dr. Lou Ruth Gray is being honored. Uh, Chris Sellen is being honored. Um, Kathy Cronin, who's retired, uh, head of children's services. And uh, myself, um, we're part of the quote unquote Rotary Hall of Fame. Although um, four members will consider attending and supporting, it would be a great, great evening. And that's it. I just want to quickly say thank you to Tom. He hosted my um, daughter's book about troops, um, I guess three weeks ago, maybe a month ago, uh, about 10 third graders um, in the library, <laughs> and gave them a tour of the basement and talked a little bit about uh, the impact of the Friends, for example, on the volunteering that he's generated and gave them a lot of fun facts. I took my daughter to put one of the buddies out for pizza, and I said, like, what did you learn? And, and they said uh, that the library does a lot to help people who aren't as lucky as we are, um, which was what one said, and that, <laughs> that they didn't think that collecting books would be able to help make money for the library. Like, he gives them some that. And they also felt cool being in the basement. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. It was my pleasure to your daughter and the other young ladies that were around fun. Um, Coalition for Mutual Respect is having, is having its dinner in honor of Dr. King on Friday. So I'm hoping that people can come tomorrow. Um, tomorrow. Not tomorrow, <laughs> the following Friday. Sorry. Right. So if we go, should we go to what? Doesn't that have his library trustee? I think so. So, did you send that to us? I did. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's listed. Temple is, Temple is really, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a long standing, it's a great event. When do you think it's Is it start at 6 o'clock p.m.? Yeah. Yeah. I can resend it. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. Are you still late? I'm still late. I'm still late. I'm still late. I'm still late. Okay, good. Um, that's it, sorry. Thank you, Tom. So, 
we have a, there's no personnel to preserve it. No, 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 no personnel. No, 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 no. Um, I, I have a number of items for the board consideration. Just, um, first of all, the really good news is we have a number of new hires to approve, and one of them is here this evening. Our first new hire is Nicolette Fudge, who was oh, recently oh, hired. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> um, she's our social the media photographer, uh, <laughs> coordinator, and her start date was that's right, January 2nd, and her annual salary is $48,530. I'd ask for a board motion. To approve. I would make a motion to approve. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. There you go. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, also, very happy news. We have a new children's librarian, um, Librarian 3. His name is Robert Sinek. His start date will be January 22nd. His starting salary will be $76,574. I have a motion to approve his um, employment. I'll make a motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'm, we're really excited about uh, Robert arriving here. He's had a, um, a um, almost 10 year career at Brooklyn Public Library working in a variety of branches. Um, he's very familiar with um, being a children's librarian. He was head of the branch as well. Um, and he's very familiar with our, with our kind of community because he's worked with uh, you know, um, a similar demographic in Brooklyn. Um, our approach to make this hire, which was incredibly important, was to uh, bring members and lesser staff into the process, particularly children's staff, since they'd be working with this new person. And um, it was it was a very spirited competition, and Robert was a unanimous choice. Um, and he brings um, great love of children's services, a uh, very personable. Um, a, a, a strong background in outreach, both in schools and in, with social uh, issues and social justice in Brooklyn. So we're happy to welcome him in the not too distant future. Just having said that, um, we also have a new team assistant who is not an employee per se, he's a contract person, but he's somebody who uh, uh, was born and raised here. His name is Luis Bruseno. His family is very prominent in the city, and he has started and is doing a fabulous job. His focus will be providing um, programming services to our teens, and he has uh, a lot of skills. He has a very um, outgoing, friendly personality, and we expect in the very near future to share with the, with the board a schedule of all new programming initiatives that will be available in the teen area. Um, because our goal was, when the board approved this part-time our contractual position was, you know, we had all the security elements down, but we wanted to find a way to engage our teams and, you know, um, you know, provide um, opportunities, learning experiences, and social experiences too. So that's really exciting. Um, one position that we're waiting on in terms of hosting is the new community and social services um, coordinator. Um, it's been installed in civil services. Department. It's rather frustrating. We're hoping that um, we'll be able to get that moving, uh, posting, and that person will be involved um, in on site helping people with um, issues that relate to social services, as well as being a coordinator for our many partnerships with social services agencies, as well as being a part of an outreach effort in the community, both with schools and nonprofits. And one final thing, and it's a really long report, but um, every January, um, the state of New York um, provides a new minimum wage, and as a result, we come to you and ask for approval to raise um, our pages, which uh, oftentimes work at that minimum wage level, to a higher level. So as I've done in the last number of years, I'm going to read off the names of the employees and their new proposed wages. And when I'm done, um, I'll ask for um, a, a motion. One approval for all. Yeah, one, <laughs> just one. I'll put everybody in there. All right, um, first of all, these are all pages that are working in various areas in the library. Don DiNicola will be um, paid at a wage of $12.25. Beatrice Galloso Alvarez will be paid at a wage of $12. Jessica Hernandez will be paid at a wage of $12.44. Jishan Jeffrey will be paid at a wage of $12. Diara Johnson Smith, wage of $12.20. Robert Klein, a wage of $12.44. 
um, Urania and Moraga, a wage of $13.30, Estefani um, Ochoa Ramirez, a wage of $12, and Nina Varghese, a wage of $12, and I ask for a motion to approve. Uh, I'd like to discuss. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're they were previously um, $11.25, $11, $11.44, $11, $11.44. Now, of course, the board. Yeah. What is the dollar across the board? A dollar across the board. And, and the different wage um, uh, numbers relate to their tenure. We thought it was unfair to penalize somebody who's been here for many years um, and give them a minimum wage when their work and their contributions, they you know, have been here. One person has been here for at least uh, 10 years. So that's why it's a little over the minimum wage because of their service in chief. This is the same thing that we've done for the past two years. Mm -hmm. Proportionately, everybody went up the dollar. Okay. And again, for the mission, is it worth us making a percentage increase, the average percentage increase? Yeah, the average um, percentage increase for these thought folks, which again is tied to um, the New York State law, yeah. is on average um, eight percent. Most of these people are seeing an eight percent increase. One person, seven point five. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. Twenty twenty one for Westchester. Do we do we have to increase the dollar? We have fifteen. We'll be at fifteen. Where are they at fifteen? In the city? In the city, they are at 15 right now. Large employees, 11 or more. Uh, and small employees are at 13, uh, 13 15. We'll be at 15 after 2019. Okay. So, yes, yeah, so uh, 1231, 2019, small businesses. Our pages are very hardworking uh, folks who work. Um, you know, to keep really the library going in terms of putting away the materials, organizing things, they're a really um, a key um, element in our ability to deliver really good customer service. To so, the so, it's 15, is What's the minimum wage here, though, is 13? Is that what you're saying? This is the, the minimum wage is 12. 12. And so, okay. we're, we're boosting everybody to at least that amount, and again, okay. tied to service times. Okay. Okay. Sorry. So we have a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the, the increases as noted. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. Right. Okay. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, the, uh, moving on to the committee reports. This budget committee, I don't think we ever look at what we are going to. Um, meet soon to begin the budgeting process for the coming year because we're already sort of there. The one thing that I did want to mention, um, Corey was not very interested in getting on the budget committee, so um, I think the budget committee right now is me, Deirdre, and me. So, you know, she wants to think about that and whether one of us is willing to. Isn't he on finance? He is on finance. Um, okay. I'm not sure he needs to be on both. Yeah. I'm on both sides. So it's just about one. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, something to think about. Um, uh, building and grounds committee. Do we have a yes. report? Yes. So at our last meeting, we discussed how the buildings and grounds committee has had a meeting with CROP, which is the capital review oversight committee made up of our community volunteers with various expertise. Um, and they were going to draft an RFP for a building assessment, which we discussed hasn't been done since 2010. So it was recommended by buildings and grounds and CROP that we get this done. And so the CROP committee came back pretty quickly, I think with an RFP that myself, the Buildings and Grounds Committee is myself, Whitney, and Corey. So we're reviewing that document, and once we make any changes that we see fit, we'll be sending it to the rest of the board for approval, and hopefully be posting that soon. And when it comes to posting that, do we need approval at the next meeting, or can we post that beforehand? How does that work with an RFP? I think typically the uh, board has to approve the RFP that it, the language is appropriate, and then once that um, uh, approval has been gained, 
then we can post it as we see fit and hopefully draw it as, as many so we'll have to wait until the next meeting? I'm, I'm okay. afraid that we really need to. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. So that was delayed, I guess, just a little bit, okay. but um, that's the report for that. And then Tom alluded to the elevator still being out of service. So I'm going to let you give the update on that because there's a lot of information there. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah, I think. Um, there is a lot of information, but it's it's good. Um, just to very briefly recap, um, we uh, contracted with um, a consultant just about four years ago and uh, went through the process of putting together a bid spec and hired a vendor to modernize our elevator because the elevator was nearly four years old and was stopped functioning. Um, we believe it was a successful project. Um, however, three plus years later, the elevator stopped functioning again. And guess what? It shouldn't happen because elevators are built to last 15, 20, 25 years, not three plus years. So um, and we had a maintenance contract for okay. regular, so we, we have somebody looking at it and maintaining it regularly. Thank you, Chuck. Right. And we, we did. We did just um, 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 sit on our laurels and say, okay, it's Got a new elevator, we're good. The vendor that won the public bid also won the, um, uh, the, the bid to maintain the elevator. However, as you folks know, uh, the elevator stopped functioning in later November, which caused us great consternation because, again, it just it shouldn't have happened. And um, we, uh, um, the company initially told us that uh, um, the company that installed the elevator modernization as well as maintained it, told us that they would charge a, a, a large sum of money to tell us what the problem was, which we said no. And so we hired another company to, at a far lesser rate, to tell us what the problem was. We discovered what it was. We also were in touch with the consultants that um, the library had hired three plus years ago. And uh, we hired another consultant, a, a consultant not the consultants that we had worked with before. And um, basically, uh, we, uh, um, our consultant, our new consultant, confirmed that in fact the elevator should not have uh, of, of lost service. And uh, we started the process of negotiating with um, the um, elevator company, who we're here for, refused to really talk to us. And with our uh, bringing a legal, um, uh, a legal friend as well as a consultant decided to talk to us, and um, good news. And as of but Tuesday, what, that, that does happen. It's, sometimes you just have to you know, be tough. And um, believe me, we're all we're extremely annoyed uh, to, to see that this elevator stopped functioning because it was such a disservice to our community, to everybody that uses the library, particularly um, um, elderly folks or differently able folks or young families that have strollers. It was a real disservice. And so we were intent on fixing it and making sure that somebody other than ourselves uh, pay for it. Well, we did get a, a response back from the initial consultants who said that the elevator firm has changed their mind and they're willing to um, fix the elevator. And um, our consultant looked at the offer and agreed that we should accept it. And so um, I'm hoping that we'll go forward and, and do so. Now, the one issue that I really can't point a finger at the um, elevator company is the issue of the influx of water into our elevator pit, which is a relatively new development. Um, we're not quite certain why this happened, though we suspect that some of the development surrounding us has changed the water table. But we know that we're dealing with far more water than we've ever built before. I mean, far more water. So we know that in tandem with this um, decision to fix the elevator, we have to come up with a permanent solution to the issue of uh, the excess water in the pit. And we're working on that with our consultant. We have a couple of options that we're exploring. And that's unfortunately um, um, on, our, on us, on our dime. Um, so, so that's sort of where we stand. And um, I guess I should ask, I don't know if the board wants to further consider this matter, or it's a sensitive board that we should accept the recommendation of our consultant and go with this um, solution. Um, I personally am very happy that we have this consultant to kind of keep um, the vendor honest. And the vision to keep the consultant? 
I would suggest we think about keeping them in some capacity to the conclusion of the work to make sure that they can independently verify that what's best for them is in line with what the expected. Yes. Makes sense. I, I agree. I think we should have somebody there to represent our interests and owners' rep. Um, and I would assume it would be the consultant. Uh, if, if he's not interested, then I would recommend that we find somebody yeah, else. Yeah, but, so yeah, I just don't, I'm not comfortable um, with the trust thing in regards to this vendor. Yeah. Well, the issue of the price is here. No. No? no. From years ago, it might have been, but not the reason. Um, the only it looks like the it looks like our lawyers, that right? That do it. Oh, our mm -hmm. lawyers said absolutely, absolutely pursue. Yeah, so if our lawyers else. said pursue it. I guess my only concern is that point three, <clears throat> where kind of it was pretty open. Well, there might be stuff, and we'll have to discuss it. And we already know. They find things. That yeah, they expect. Um, and we already know that I don't consider them trustworthy. So that that gives me a little pause. However, mm -hmm. I think we do have to follow what our lawyers saying. It does, and that's why, Andrew, I'm with you 100% given what's transpired in the recent past. That's where I think we need um, a knowledgeable owner's rep that, okay. is, um, um, that has this kind of background that can um, uh, can look at a claim by the vendor and evaluate its um, honesty. Okay, okay. I, I mean, I think, I, think if, I, I think if our consultant yeah. walked away and we were left to um, sort of manage the project, I think it would be a disservice. Okay. The only other thing that I would suggest is that we get a very firm timeline from them around completion of this okay. um, and obviously as quickly as possible. The, the only, I, I absolutely agree because I see every day that the um, discomfort that this lack of an elevator causes um, all sorts of people, public and staff. Um, what, the one thing that we're working on is this issue of the water and we're trying to find a vendor that will allow us to um, take care of this problem while we're taking care of the problem of the no, uh, we've got to do it at one time. But I'm, I'm with you, Chuck. We want to move it as quickly as possible. I do want to ask how you had mentioned that the water table had changed, probably because of development. Is that something that a developer would potentially be liable for? Or how does something like that work? Um, you know, it's good questions here. Our speculation was that that development was the, the reason because we don't know what else has changed. I mean, uh, I think that's an important word though, speculation. Specu it is speculation, but we don't know that for a fact. And even the consultant, when we talked about all the factors, he said, well, he said that could be, well, the reason. He said, I wouldn't, he said, I personally wouldn't be able to I would definitely say that, that, that it was. So and, 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 and also, if that was something, I mean, I would think that there would be businesses all over town who would be complaining about certain issues, like, or would be complaining perhaps that when it rains, the water, you know, their basements are impacted differently because the water table's changed. I mean, so, and the water table doesn't change, but it's being impacted. So I, I would think that this is, if this, if it was that, we would hear more about from other places. It's very hard to know, but um, you know, it might be something we do hear about later, but that we're not really hearing about it now. No, no. I mean, it, 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 it is a puzzlement why, uh, we did have water in the past, but it was always pretty manageable. We had a sump pump down there to pump out the water. You know, really simple solution that most of us have in our homes. But the sump pump had, um, in, the recent past was overwhelmed, not because it stopped functioning, but because of the water. And no, so it's something fascinating though, because in my neighborhood, our house, the house right behind me, has a tort, has like a lake in the backyard like they have never had before. Which no development there. We know about like they they want to move. I mean, it's so awful. So I I just think also our weather pattern has changed significantly. Absolutely. Um, and so that could be impacting it. Absolutely. So we've had far more rain um, 
you know, that we have in these meetings. And I suggest, because I think with respect to all of us, we're kind of speaking without being experts on this. Um, uh, at least I can speak for myself. What I might suggest is that the Building and Grounds Committee that has some experts in building that perhaps we, you know, I think we should proceed with the, the what we're, we need to get the elevator fixed, but I think, you know, what I, my suggestion would be that perhaps that can raise it as a topic of the next crop committee and raise it to the group and see what the thought is, because I have no expertise. Or no more. Or no more. Or no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll look into that in the next week. Um, anything else from the Lee and Brown? No, we're just reviewing the RFP for the gallery. Um, I was impressed with the turnaround and the, um, it's really dense. <laughs> it's like four or five pages. I'm excited to read it actually. You don't hear that every day. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm read the RFP. Um, thank you. Uh, Community Relations Foundation and New York Partnership. So uh, Tom sent out an email to Yes, all of us on December 19th with the Friends meetings. Not only the book sale, but it's the Friends meetings. He wrote, he wrote them in during that month. So, um, so look at the Friends of the Friends meetings. So uh, definitely look at that. You know, maybe I can put it on that post call that you will say. Yes. That's I, true. Yeah, and people can put it when they can go. I can do that. Thank you. Yeah? December 19th, just look at your emails. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, okay, uh, there's. Uh, I also sent you guys something about a grant writing workshop. I don't know if anybody's interested in going, but they're having a, they're, they're having a grant writing workshop here tomorrow, I believe. Um, if whoever one, one wants to do it from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., it's a thirty dollars suggested donation. Um, even if you're not a grant writer, but just to understand the process of how grants work, a lot of people wonder why I can get this money or why there is a lot that goes into the grant writing process. Um, and even as a individual learning where to find grant, that has Tom and not know or anyone, foundation or anything, um, again, just try to get um, connect with that. And um, speaking of um, two things, so the, the foundation received a check of $3,500 um, at a beautiful event that they have at New Rock City, the uh, Ring in the New Year, and the foundation uh, was one of uh, one of the only eight um, organizations that was selected uh, with the proceeds from that that, that were a suggested donation, even though uh, they were able to raise uh, that amount. Uh, it was a good turnout. The foundation had a table there. Chris Sell was there. Uh, another board member was there doing uh, New Year's hats for the kids. They had. I think it was like 300 plus people that attended. Um, it was packed, packed. Um, but um, they were able to receive a nice little check from Parkman, who uh, Fred and Sherry Brook, who uh, own that company and do that event every year. So that was pretty cool. And uh, I attended the Three Kings event that they had here last week, I believe. Um, it was my first time ever to see a theater packed. Like, it was packed. Standing, people were standing and everything. And it was pretty uh, amazing to see uh, when you look at an event that is directed to, to a lot of the Latino and Hispanic community, but when you look into the audience, the diverse uh, people that were in the room, it was pretty impressive. And it, it goes to show the diversity of our community and just how many people embrace the culture and the arts that happen here. So it was amazing. Um, and and Kapui does a um, Free dance lessons, I believe, during the summer, and Barb said that that information would be out sooner than later. But um, it was just an amazing event. And speaking of events that are coming up, just so everybody can have a calendar: Boys and Girls Club 90th anniversary, March 1st. That's going to be at the Surf Club. Uh, past um, executives or directors from the Boys and Girls Club, like Chris Templeman. Uh, Kelly Johnson, these are individuals that are being honored uh, by the Boys and Girls Club. And, um, and yeah, that's all I have. Daniel, I just would like to add one thing. You mentioned that we are hosting a workshop about um, 
great writing here at the library tomorrow. Um, we're also going to be announcing that thanks to the friends of the New Rochelle Public Library, um, uh, we are offering a new um, online resource, a grant writing foundation resource, where uh, people in the community can, can come to the library and can be shown how to use this um, really powerful resource to look for grants for their organizations, etc. And that again is thanks to the friends that Council of Community Services asked the library to provide this resource. It was in the middle of a budget year, so we asked the friends and they were terrific and stepped up. So that's that's something that everybody should know if you're a part of an organization that is looking for money, which you know, what organization is it? Um, this is a new resource that the library will provide. And I also want to give a special shout out to Chuck, um, who uh, helped me at an event on December 23rd. We fed over 180 families, I believe, at Columbus Elementary School. So Chuck, thank you for uh, coming out and um, you know donating your time uh, for the family at the West End for a show. Well, also referring to uh, community relations, I'd like to understand this a little bit related to what we're doing here. But yesterday afternoon, uh, this was Wednesday, right? I donated uh, $200 to uh, my brother's keeper. Uh, and part of that to money is going to be for purchasing books for yes. distribution to uh, our yeah. guys. That's the Rotary Club of New Rochelle. Correct. So we're working with my brother. We have been for a while, but this is an opportunity, as Francis said, to repopulate um, you know, the book, the book uh, locations throughout the city. Uh, and actually, I have one add-on. So we've talked about this before, but the foundation is getting geared up. I'm just sorry, just kind of want to get the date wrong. For its 25th anniversary on the 9th of May, or currently, anybody that wants to dip into their checkbooks, they're currently trying to solicit, uh, you know, sort of larger donations, sponsorships. Um, so if you're interested in that, um, you can obviously Tom can route you in the right direction. You can reach out to Chris Sellen. But I just wanted to give a, a plug for that. It's the 25th of, sorry, the 9th of May um, at the Davenport uh, Club. So I just wanted to mention that. Oh, uh, kind of sorry, can I just have one more day? Uh, two more minutes, actually. Uh, again, from my last, the last board meeting, we talked about Facebook. Uh, no one thought on to give a recommendation. We had the last, the most recent was uh, uh, our good friend and supporter from uh, the foundation. It was a recent con uh, uh, star on the Sunday 27th, but we're at a 4.8 out of, out of 5. I think our, our Mirachelle Public Library deserves to be a 5 star. So just get on there, give it a 5 star, and all try to see if you look on Google, we have a rating of 4.3. That's a 39 reviews. I think we're better than that. So if you have not gone over there, just that's all you have to do. Just give it a couple of stars and a like and a comment and, and it's five it. stars. Not five stars, yeah. yeah. And it's five stars. Yeah. I don't know if you do that. I think this is where I'm showing like the generational cut. I don't even like it. Yeah. So, so when you go to the image of the public library on uh, Facebook, you like their page and then you review it. You can click review on the left hand side, it's the fourth one down, yes. and then you give your review. All right, and it's important because it helps us, you know, get, yeah. get out there on people's feeds and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and since we have our new, right, social media and yes. stuff like that, this is important, right? Because yeah. the numbers and statistics and all that stuff. So um, it's all good, good stuff. And, and the more more likes, the more content it really gets out there. And it helps us just really well decide to get the people engaged. Thank you. Did anybody have anything? Uh, finance committee, we just met before this meeting, uh, Daniel and I, and um, I guess just quick updates. We we talked about, we got the results of the, we don't have an audit of our own per se, but we're audited as part of the school district's audit, and no issues, everything's clean, bill of health. Um, so that's that. The other item worth mentioning is our fund balance, which just to remind people or, or Francis, um, it may be a new concept for you. It's basically every year, whatever our budget is, whatever we don't spend of our budget kind of gets put on the balance sheet as our fund balance. Um, and so it's basically, the, you know, 
it's an accumulation of unspent budgets over the years, and you need to keep it within a certain range. There's guidelines that the you know the state gives you. Don't lose it. You don't lose it, but you, but you but you you need to keep it within a certain yeah. range. Um, and so the the um, the fund balance uh, went up, which is good. We had you know some we had some money that we didn't end up having to spend, and then that we had earmarked some expenditures for that we didn't we we, we came in under budget. So the spendable portion of the fund balance went from $608,000 uh, approximately last year in 2017 to $922,882, an increase of $314,000. So um, I think it's still within the allowable what sort of... I don't remember off hand. It will we'll, uh, we actually I think Tom Ford around to everybody. There's a, there's, a, there's a webinar coming up around prudent management of your fund balance. <laughs> so controller's office. So we had we had gotten guidelines from our attorney a while back, but I think you know we'll keep on that and, and making sure we're keeping it in an appropriate uh, range, but so that's positive. Um, and we I mean Francis in the past, we don't like to do it in the past, we've used it. When I first came on board, we used it um, a little bit uh, for our budget, uh, so that the percentage that we were increasing the budget by, we were asking what it was in its pay, but we haven't done that in the simple. Yeah, right? yeah, and I think it's a balance because you, you can't, I don't remember the exact percentages, but it's certainly, I think it shouldn't be more than kind of 20% of your annual budget. And so if you got to that, you would spend some of it yeah. down. But, but other than that, you know, we try not to, we try to keep it in an appropriate range. Uh, is there anything else we can do? We're spending money to be across the No. Yeah. Um, so that's the Finance Committee report. Um, anything from the needs assessment? Do you want to just talk about it? We're, we're, we're going out the RFP out. We, um, we have not sent the RFP out because we were uh, worried about it getting lost in the holiday flurry, so we will be sending it out. Um, Cover letter, and we should be sending it out probably um, by the end of next week. Excellent. Um, personnel committee, we don't have a report. Nothing policy, anything too special for our changes. Yes, so we are still waiting. Um, Happy with the uh, foundation, um, and um, we're just waiting for more response from from the potential donors. So there's nothing really to report on that. Relative to the sculpture donation, that's right. That is um, hopefully scheduled to be placed in the memorial um, highway courtyard. Right, and so there's some more um, kind of robust planning around that in partnership. We hope with. The foundation too, and so this could turn into something um, you know really exciting that everybody's celebrating uh, beyond just what we would promote. I think it's um, kind of shaping up to be exciting, but stay tuned. Wonderful. Uh, okay, we'll go to the public. Uh, public to be heard. Um, uh, Marjorie Set. Against racism, it's called New Rule, um, and we've been meeting weekly 
city for almost five years now, um, focusing mainly on New Rochelle to try to undo structural and institutional racism. And actually the board, just for many of the people on the board just recently went through um, an anti-racist training with um, one of the facilitators who's part of our, our group. So I just want to give you a little background on that. I want to really appreciate that even though the agenda said that the public discussion was in the beginning, but one of the things that we wanted to ask was that we really would like to hear from the committees before the public discussion. So I'm wondering if that could be something that could be done regularly. I appreciate that you did that tonight because it's very hard for us to then have to wait. If we went first, to wait to have to speak um, for a month. So if that could be something that could be done. Yeah, we'll consider that. Okay. Um, I, I want to appreciate the letter that you're writing to um, Mr. Aragon um, about, as, you know, with the focus on the parking. And I think as um, was brought up, though, with the water in the building, as, as possibly, I know you're saying it's maybe speculative that it may have to do with the development. Um, but it's something to really think about as more and more development is happening here, that the city needs to be held accountable for any possible changes. Um, that are happening with the water table or any of the services, other services in in the Michelle. And as a board, you know, in terms of your job is protecting the library, I really hope that that's something that you will talk about in the meeting when you have the meeting with them. I don't know if you're gonna, you know, we put that in the letter um, because that's really important. Um, it's going to be happening more and more as the city has allowed. You know, people to, to buy the city property in the parking lots. Um, and with that said, also, there are things like um, the light, you know, if, if RXR decides that they want to try to build a very high building here, the light, the impact of blocking the light would be really detrimental to the library. So I would ask that in addition to being concerned of and looking out for the parking, that you include those other aspects. Um, to address in your meetings with the city that even though legally they may be allowed to do certain things um, in terms of their reputation in the community um, and they supposedly care about the community and they need to be held accountable to that too. So not only do I, we ask you to hold the city accountable, but to, have, to tell the city that they, the developers need to be accountable to not do anything that could damage any part of this vital, the most vital resource that we believe is the most vital resource, public resource in the Michelle. So if you could expand your concerns and and really own that, I think you have a lot of power um, in this um, to influence what can happen, not only with the Commission of Development and the Mayor, but to have them also influence the developers as, as well as you have that influence as well. So I would ask you to, to use that. And we would like to support you in any way we can with that as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Dan Miller. I'll pass on that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lord Swan. Happy New Year, everyone. It's really wonderful to be with you all again. It's so much more a pleasure to be here than the city council and all the other meetings. You guys are here. Um, my, my statement, it, it's very hard to talk after Marjorie because she's so great. But I just want to remind us that this building made history in its architecture by the way it was built using light. And that is central to us to remember that this building is not just a building. It's a statement and it's the pearl of our new Rochelle. So, just as Marjorie said, keep that in mind when having discussions with the city. Let them know that this is not just a library where there are books and people come in and out. And it's a statement, it's, it made history, and it's very special. And we're very happy that you guys are the ones protecting it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Megan Mercado. Good evening. My 
name is Mugali Mankaro, and I'm a resident of Hiroshi and a patron of the Hiroshi Public Library. I was at the library on Wednesday, yesterday, there, January 9th, 2019. On Wednesday morning, I was doing some research on my laptop. When I completed my work, I decided to browse through the new book section. I noticed this beautiful, colorful book with yarn thread on the cover. Since I love so many reading, why not check it out? It seemed interesting, yet as I turned the pages, I saw more nudity of fem female and male, which some may consider a form of art. As I kept turning the pages, I came across an image of a sexual act being performed on another individual. I immediately brought it up to the staff, who seemed to be disturbed as well. I asked the library staff member that I wished to speak to Ms. Giofrino about the book, who is in charge of ordering books, and if the books are reviewed before they're placed on the shelves. Long story short, I went upstairs, spoke to Mr. Giofino, and he basically refused to have the book removed from the shelf. Mr. Giofino kept stating to me that he understood my concern. Yet, I felt that a certain way I should, I should be, that I should be able to walk around with my children when they pick out books at the library. Mr. Giorfino was very quick to reply to my concerns. He kept stating, I understand. I don't think he actually was comprehending what I was stating. I was, he was quick, me, he was quick to reply, yet not attentive to comprehending my concerns, not only for the children, but for our community as well. As a professional, we must be at ease to listen attentively and respectfully to what other person is stating, whether we agree with the individual or not. Lastly, the book or the kind of material should be placed in an adult section or that some patrons of the library suggested under lock and key. So I actually checked the book out after addressing it to Mr. Giorfino because I thought it was disturbing. And in the new section downstairs, any child can go and, and browse through it. So I'd like to share the images with you, and then you can judge page 20. This is just some, which is okay. I can be paid as a ten. Yes. And the same pages I, I showed you guys, I showed them to Mr. Giofino. And um, but obviously I went around the library and spoke to a lot of the patrons and they were disturbed by the images. Some didn't even want to be bothered or beautiful. Um, I decided to check out the book because I thought it should be on the shelf and I wanted to bring it to this meeting. And he was very sarcastic at the end. He said, yeah, the meeting's going to be there tomorrow at 7.30, which I already knew the time. OK. So my other question that I really wanted to talk about was the policy of the New York Public Library. Um, I went to the front desk yesterday, and I asked about the policy and how can I know what are the policies. And no, no one can find me a copy. It was, it was sad. Um, I feel that as a patron, um, a copy at least should be placed on the second floor so people can view it. Uh, there was an incident. My son is an honor student at ICT Young. He attended S2A. He, he never had a fight. And he told me there was an altercation with a child in the uh, teenage room. And the kid actually could, it was physical. He punched another child and went around um, uh, stating that he was going to hit the other kids. Security came in the room. They didn't. They didn't take out the, the child that caused the uh, the physical harm to the child. Was not he, he was not addressed, and no one told him to leave the library. I thought that was disturbing. I don't send my son to the library to get into fights with anyone. So I told my son that I was going to come to the meeting and address. So thank you, thank you guys for this evening, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with you. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I, I do want to acknowledge that I did have a conversation 
with um, our last speaker yesterday about this book. And um, I did understand, and I do understand. Um, I also want to mention that relative to the library's procedure, we do choose books that um, are um, based on review sources, and this book was reviewed by um, Lambda Literary as one of the best um, nonfiction titles for um, gay issues in 2018. Uh, the monies that we used to purchase this book, I, I think it's fair to let you all know, were monies that were given to us by the Westchester Library System and with the um, particular purpose of using uh, monies to purchase books for underserved populations. So over the years, we've used the money to purchase books for Spanish speakers, for seniors, for faith-based uh, books, we've used it for children. Um, we've used it to create um, an Arabic collection. So we we use the monies um, to honor the request of the county. Um, among the underserved populations are the LGBT uh, population, and we purchase books in the children's area, the teen area, and the adult area. The, the book that um, um, uh, our recent speaker pointed out was a book that indeed was not in the children's area. It was in the um, adult area. It was on the new bookshelf. Frankly, it's not an area where we see many children browse. It's, just, it's not, but that's just having said that. Um, when we had a conversation, I'm sorry if you felt I was sarcastic. I, I really wasn't trying to be. I totally understood your point of view. My two boys are now in their 20s, but um, if my sons had encountered that book, I would have um, asked them. I would not have been happy at a particular point in their life for them to see that. Um, I did explain that um, Holy Books runs counter to the library policy um, as adopted by the board in regards to the American Library Association right to read policy. Um, and uh, this particular book, um, Queer Threads, I didn't order it. I didn't know anything about it until um, it was brought to my attention yesterday. But again, it was a book that was highly reviewed. It was based on an art exhibit that was at a museum in the city that um, highlighted um, um, some like textile um, um, uh, uh, crafts that were created by, by gay folks and it had a gay um, um, point of view and, and, and not. And it was a hugely successful exhibit which traveled around the country. There was a book that was published as a result of it. Again, it was highly reviewed. And so our staff felt that it was appropriate to purchase it. Um, the other thing I just want to mention, it's a long-standing policy that, um, that the board has adopted and it's common practice throughout libraries in this country, is we do not censor books. We do not tell uh, people or uh, parents what books um, they or their children can read. I, I mentioned that to our speaker, that we don't function to coin a Latin phrase in loco parentis. Um, when she very rightly brought this book to my attention and said she had concerns, I, I did understand. I also said that we as a staff, as a board, do not make decisions um, for families. It's families, you know, if you are interested in having your children use the library, which we entirely welcome, um, we encourage families to participate in the process to help make decisions about what is and isn't appropriate. A, a, a book like that may, may be inappropriate for um, for this person and many others, but for other people it might be totally fine and appropriate. No judgment here, either way. Um, I, I just feel that I have to say that. We do have a process that um, I'd like to share the form with you. Um, you walked out before you know, um, before I could share that document with you. Um, and I, before, at the end of the meeting, I'd like to give you that document to fill out so that it will formally go back to the, to the board. They heard your very eloquent presentation and they can consider the matter in greater detail. And I, I don't know if the board has anything else to say. Um, regarding the access to library policies. 
are on the, on the, on the web. We have, we have all our policies are on, on, on the web. And um, um, I, I, I'm happy to share, send that link to you if you share the email with me, your email with me. But all our policies, our public policies are there. We, we're trying not to um, disguise anything. And I think the other issue that I didn't address was the issue of there was an incident in the teen area, and we take um, um, that kind of behavior um, very seriously. We now have two security guards in the library every hour of operation, and one of the guards is located across from the teen area. What we, um, we cannot um, vouchsafe that anybody walking into any space in the library is per se safe, but we certainly are doing everything we can to make sure that appropriate behavior um, is not only encouraged, but um, enforced. If something happens with anybody, a teen or anybody else, what we encourage um, um, members of the public to do is to come to our library staff and say, this is a problem. Now, if you're someone who's here, young person, you might not have felt comfortable, but, but we, I can promise you, we take action, we ban, um, to put it bluntly, we, blame, we ban people who misbehave. It could be violence, it could be looking at pornography on the screen, it, it, it could be um, mutilation of books. There's, we have a code of conduct that actually is published throughout the library. So um, I'm sorry that that incident happened. We certainly want to make sure the library is safe for everybody. And um, you know, in future incidents, just talking to the staff, you know, the patrons do not have to confront another patron. They go to the staff, and I promise you, they'll take action. And if action is not taken appropriately, as you know, my door is open. I see everybody. You know, if I'm there. Thank you. Uh, Lenny Evelard. I'll pass. Thank you. Uh, Dorothy Oliver. <laughs> Happy New Year to everyone. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Um, my concern was, I think Marjorie was here alluded to it. We were uh, walking here in New Shell, and we noticed that there were uh, some metal planks by XR in Uganda. They were taken to a uh, core, kind of a clinical core assessment for samples. And so we came in and we told Mr. Giovino about it. And then we got to thinking if our XR can't buy this building, and if they decide to build around you, as the sense was said earlier by one of the commissioners here in New Rochelle, that's a concern of mine. Because I know it's, it's going to not only um, block light, but it's going to thwart this building. I'm thinking about, and as you mentioned earlier, I'm so glad to hear that you're sending a letter about parking and what it's going to do to the parking spaces here. I mean, we're suffering here as it is. And the, the uh, RXR thinking about building a large building around here, it, it just exacerbates the matter for us, for people here at Jewish that would like to park. So I, I really wish that you guys would really step on it. I don't think you have to be like me because um, I would be sitting on someone's lap now making sure they understood my anger and my disappointment and, and, and their selfishness. But, but let them know, you know, that this is a, 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 I, a, which is a idea that they should, you know, dispose of. It just can't happen. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Any other uh, new business? From the members of the board. Okay. I'll make a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye.